Hey, it's Tom, and we're uh, we're at Cars and Coffee in St. Louis, and we've got another edition of the story behind the car. I'm with Jeff. We just shot another Jeff, his '59 Ranchero, and this is a, a different Jeff, different spelling, but this is his 1949 Buick Super Cedanet, and it also has a Dynaflow transmission, which we'll talk about. I got to get the grill, and Jeff. Wow. How long have you owned this car? I uh, bought it in February of 2012. Okay, so you've had it 12 years, a 12, little over 12 years then. The car was in Pasadena, California. And what drew you to it? Uh, my father drove Buicks in the 50s, and I've always loved this particular Buick. Okay. All right, and so I found it and uh, had the conversation with my wife. She agreed, so we had it shipped. Does the hood open sideways? It does. Yes. I knew 48 did, and I thought 49 did as well. And perhaps we'll uh, pop the hood in a little bit? We can certainly do that. Okay. So this is just a beautiful... Uh, so this is post-war, and I guess the Cedanet was a fastback, and that was a big deal right after World War II, I would imagine. It was a popular body style, but the 49 was the first true post-war style. From 1946 to 48, they were warmed over 1942. Yeah, viewings. I had a 41 Chevy pickup truck, but the 46 looked the same way because everything was used during the war. Correct. And are the, the hubcaps, are those original? Those are uh, original, yes. That's what you would have seen, the beauty rings. But That's really interesting because this I mean, this this grill is over the top, beautiful, and then the uh, side marker lights or blinkers, and then the the hubcap. No offense, it seems kind of plain compared to the rest of the vehicle. They had a different hubcap also, which was full wheel cover. Okay. Like you see on some Cadillacs. Okay. Uh, this one just has the, the dog dish and the beauty ring. Yeah. And when you bought it 12 years ago, what condition was it in? Condition uh, basically as it is today, okay. except I removed the dash and all the metal trim, and I had it uh, repainted. Okay. And I rewired the front. Okay. So then I put it all back together. But the material, the headliner, the carpet is all as it was. The body. Yeah. That's when I bought it. And what is the uh, the color? Uh, the Buick factory black was called Carlsbad black. Okay. It almost looks like a, a really dark burgundy almost here on the top. Maybe it's just me. This car originally was painted Elon Blue at the factory. It was built in Kansas City. Oh, okay. And uh, March of 1949. And then a restorer about 40 years ago painted it black. Which is okay. a common thing for these cars. Yeah. Because they look good in black. Well, it looks, it looks fast just sitting still. And I love the taillights. And then the backup light is so beautiful as well. Just really, really beautiful. And is it okay if I open the, well, do you mind opening the trunk? Oh, I don't mind at all. Just while we're here. Get my camera in there a little better. Not as much room as I would have thought, but then again, it is. You would think, but uh, the thing is, it's not a sedan. It's yes. A sedanet, so they sacrifice something for style. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Not for me. <laughs> no. Now, I don't know what year Harley Earl got with GM. Was he a designer on this by chance? No, he started with GM in 1927, and his first work was the LaSalle. Okay. The, the head designer on this car was a guy named Ned Nichols. Okay. And in 1948, uh, after World War II, you know, everything was focused on aircraft and yeah. all that. He cut four portholes in his 1948 Buick on the fender, and he put lights in there. Oh, really? And he wired them to the spark plug wires. Oh, boy. So that as the car ran, you would see the different... I've never heard that up. before. So they incorporated those at the factory for the 19... starting in the 1949 model year, and they called them Ventiports. Okay. Now, did so, this originally have lights in that? No, no, yeah. they didn't. 
Yeah. Now you notice the Super has three Venta ports because it had a, a 248 cubic inch engine. Okay. Shorter than the Roadmaster. The Roadmaster engine was four inches longer. And because it was longer, they added another Venta port for proportioning. Okay. So if you see four uh, Venta ports, that's a Roadmaster. Okay. I had a LeSabre, a 61 LeSabre. It had three. Do you mind if I open the door? Please do. And I, I always uh, marvel at the covers up the key. Oh my gosh, look at that door handle. Just the, the design. Boy, oh boy. Man, that seat is elegant. And it's an automatic. It's an automatic. So the Dynaflow transmission did not That's right. shift. Okay? okay. The shifting, the torque multiplication took place in the torque converter. Okay. All right. And so that's that was the genius of Buick was to uh, have that torque converter change from torque to speed at about 40 miles an hour. Okay. I won't bore you with the details. Yeah. It had to do with the way the oil inside the torque converter was redirected at 40 miles an hour. Okay. So the transmission does not shift. Now it has a low setting, but you'd only do that if you're going up a hill. Yeah. And you needed the extra lower gear. But otherwise, you won't you won't feel any shifting with this car. It just it just takes off. Yeah, smooth. Now my 61 had a Dynaflow and reverse was all the way down. Same with this. Oh, is it really? Okay. Oh yeah. And I was at a car show, and a guy, an elderly gentleman, he said, oh, my dad had a 61, and I took it out high school. And <laughs> he said, I thought I was dropping it in low, and I put it in reverse. I told my dad, I don't know what happened, Dad. And Jeff, can we, uh, I'll let you close the door. Can we look at the engine? We certainly can. So the release is inside. Okay. And it opens either side, correct? It opens either side, which makes it easy to uh, remove the hood if you need to do some serious engine work. Yeah. Let's get somebody on the other side. But that's a Carter two-barrel carburetor. Okay. And it's a straight eight. That's straight eight. The 248. And was Buick the first with the straight eight? No, Packard had a straight eight. Dusenberg yeah. had a straight eight. Straight eights go back to at least the late 20s. Okay. And what is this plumbing here? Is that just uh, wires in there? Yeah, I just used that to enclose the wiring. Yeah. When I rewired it, just, just for the look. Yeah. It's not authentic. Yeah. You know? And is this an oil bath? Uh, yes, it's yeah. an oil bath air cleaner. Yeah. Big horns, too. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Ducting would be black fabric. Okay. And I will do that, but that's just so if you have somebody who knows, say, what's that aluminum doing in there? And that's yeah. In and uh, the uh, copper or. Uh, that's a toilet bowl float that I used. I made a uh, uh, radiator tank overflow with. Okay. That. And I was going to say that, but I thought I'll just keep my mouth shut and just wait and see what you said. Yeah. So I kind of was going for a kind of a steampunk look. Yeah. Very cool. And I, you don't have to. Is it worth looking at it from the other side? Is there anything we unique or something? Okay. And I love the gun side on the the front end. Oh, there's a release on both sides then. Yes, it has to be. Yeah. Boy, that is a straight eight. I have the uh, cover for the spark plugs. I just haven't put it on. Yeah. I was uh, changing out the uh, the igniter and the distributor. And I see you have them labeled with your tags. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to finish that up. Yeah, but that makes sense. That way you you don't have a problem. And then here's your uh, toilet bowl float. <laughs> I thought that's what it was. But that's pretty neat. And how does it run as far as temperature? It has never overheated. Yeah. There's no shroud on the radiator. Uh, it doesn't need a shroud. Yeah. Uh, the engine has been 
for the 12 years I've owned the car trouble free. Yeah. The only thing I needed to do was convert to an alternator. Okay. The generator was tired, and I put a new higher capacity battery. This is that long. Oh yeah. Six volt from Napa. It's got a thousand cranking amps, so it really turns that engine over. Wow. And I'll let you put that hood down. I don't want to wear you out. The only thing I've done to the car is have the uh, transmission rebuilt. Yeah. And converted uh, to a, uh, an alternator. Okay. And then electronic ignition out of the computer. Other than that, it's, that's the difference between uh, what you get with quality. The yeah. Trouble yes. Yeah, I had my uh, transmission rebuilt. Uh, it leaked, and every once in a while, it had to add more transmission fluid, uh, and then I had it rebuilt. Well, just a beautiful, beautiful car, Jeff. Well, thank you so much for showing it to us. Uh, and I'm just curious. I see it's got a split windshield. Yes. What year did they go to the solid, do you know? Uh, I believe in 1954. Okay. It might have been 53. I'd have to Yeah. I'd have to look. Yeah. Well, absolutely gorgeous. And thank you so much for showing it to us. It's my pleasure.